Hail by night, tornado by day. Back-to-back -back severe weather days in the metro area drops a rare tornado in Highlands Ranch right along I-70, snapping trees and damaging houses. Red Rocks brushes off whether it should have done more to help people avoid the hailstorm that injured nearly 100 people last night. Tonight, a word on balancing personal responsibility with doing the basics to take care of each other when nasty weather strikes. Because this is Colorado, and this is next. This is a remember when day. Remember when a tornado touched down inside the metro area and ran along C-470 near Park Meadows Mall. That is what happened today. Fortunately, no injuries have been reported at this point, and the severe weather threat appears to have passed out of town. Here's the rough path of the tornado as it was tracked by the National Weather Service in Boulder. Touched down just west of Lucent, south of C-470 and Highlands Ranch. Moved east through residential neighborhoods across Broadway, then South Colorado Boulevard. Turned out to the southeast and picked up west of Lone Tree Golf Club. At this point, what we have seen is a lot of this kind of thing. Big old beautiful trees taken down, sometimes damaging fences and houses in the process. In just a moment, we expect to have a briefing from South Metro Fire, and we will listen in to hear what they have to say. We're already responding to emergencies when the damage occurred here, so they were not here at the time that this happened. Things that our firefighters have been responding to, again, kind of include people thinking that their homes or businesses were struck by lightning, smoke conditions inside of some of those buildings, fire alarm activations, natural gas leaks, electrical problems and trees that are laying on top of houses. Um, through all of those events, we haven't found what we would describe as significant structural damage, nothing that has required our technical rescue team to do any kind of shoring on structures or make sure that the structure is okay. And once again, thankfully, we haven't encountered any other storm-related injuries here in the Highlands Ranch area. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Deborah Takahara, Public Information Officer with Douglas County Sheriff's Office. She can talk more about what the Sheriff's Office is doing now and talk about the drive home, and then we'll be happy to answer any questions that you all have after that. Can you repeat your name, sir? Eric Hurst, Public Information Officer with South Metro Fire Rescue. That's CK or just CK? E-R-I-C-H-U-R-S-T. So great news there from South Metro Fire again. No injuries reported. 6.3 mile preliminary path of this tornado from Highlands Ranch into Centennial. And as they said, no significant damage to homes. Nobody needed to be rescued from inside a home and no injuries first and foremost. We want to bring in Danielle Grant to take a look at the state of play right now. Danielle. It looks like these thunderstorms are really starting to push out of the metro area, so a bit of good news. However, don't let your guard down just yet. We could see some outflow boundaries push back into parts of the metro area and help fire up a couple more storms. But really, I think the worst of the storms today are now moving off to the east. We still have severe thunderstorm warnings out there. Parts of El Paso County continuing to stretch into Al Elbert County for flash flood warnings. They've seen upwards of two, three inches of rainfall with all of this coming their way. Of of course, I just sliced the storm in half, still looking at 40,000 uh, feet as far as the cloud tops go. This is incredible to see this powerful of a storm maintain all of that as it tracked in from the foothills toward Evergreen, dropped throughout parts of Lakewood, and then continued to its march toward Highlands Ranch, dropping the tornado and then rolling in toward Parker. Anywhere between one to three inches of water already coming through on already saturated surfaces. This is our hail signature. You can see the hail coming in off the foothills and then continuing to march in and around parts of Elbert County tonight. Mel sent this one in to us. Huge hail out there near Morrison. Golf ball size hail. We've seen several reports near Aurora, Sheridan. Golf ball size hail. Ping pong ball size hail in Little King, Castle Pines, Parker, King Carroll. Everyone dealing with kind of the worst of it. Look at these dew points in the 50s and 60s still for much of eastern Colorado. That's just indicating we have so much moisture in the atmosphere. So still, Kyle, these storms are going to be primed. The atmosphere is right, or we could see one or two, two more roll in later this evening. But again, I anticipate the worst now over. We'll go over the timing. I'll show you the weekend forecast in just a few. All right, Danielle, appreciate it. Two days in a row, they've nailed the when and where of this thing. So today we learned, checking out the path of this storm, that there's a place in Highlands Ranch called Cougar Run Park. Chris Bianchi's out there. 
No cougars encountered, I assume, but lots of trees that kind of look like they were felled by Paul Bunyan's axe. It's wild, Chris, just one after another after another. Uh, exactly, Kyle. I certainly hope there are no cougars out here. But yes, there are several trees that are down right behind me. And I'll also say this to you, Kyle. This is just the kind of beginning of what we've seen in this neighborhood on the east side of Highlands Ranch, where you head up the road that you can kind of see on the fringes on the left of your screen there. Uh, you head up that road a little bit, and there are trees just covering the roads out that way. It has certainly been a rough, long afternoon for a lot of the residents out this way, but we're starting to see the beginnings of the cleanup process beginning out that way. Neighbors helping neighbors, those kinds of things that we like to see. Now, uh, if you allow me here, a little bit of meteorological geekiness, what we're looking at here, when you see something like this, this is from what we term a supercell thunderstorm. Folks, what the kind of damage we're looking at here from a tornado in the Denver area, this is extremely rare. Now, a lot of you might say, I've seen a tornado back in maybe 1997, 1988. We've had tornadoes in Denver, but the kind of tornado that touched down and produced the kind of damage that you're looking at here is very unusual. This is basically a Texas or Louisiana or Alabama kind of tornado that we saw touch down here into the Denver metro area, something we just rarely see. Again, what we term a supercell thunderstorm. And the damage, well, you're looking at these 20, 25-foot trees that are down as a result of this. But again, the cleanup process is just beginning out here in the Cougar Run neighborhood. So, so far, at least no injuries. That's certainly the most important news. But Again, quite a bit in the way of damage out this way. And Chris, we won't know for sure until they get in and they tally up the damage for insurance purposes. But you're thinking perhaps this is the biggest storm inside the metro area since the one about five, six years ago that took out the roof at Colorado Mills Mall and did all kinds of damage on the west side of town. Yeah, that uh, certainly in terms of impact, this is going to end up being the biggest storm since that May 2017 storm. Uh, but in terms of a tornado, uh, Kyle, I would say that what we saw here, I've been here for 13 years. I've never seen a supercell thunderstorm touch down in the Denver metro area, and I think it's going to be a long time before we see another one of these kinds of tornadoes touch down out this way again. Hopefully. Let, let's hope. Let's hope. Chris Bianchi reporting from Cougar Run Park in Highlands Ranch. Thank you, Chris. So this is back-to-back -back days of weather like this, and the State Office of Emergency Management is saying that the governor has now given preliminary approval to a disaster declaration that covers Lincoln, Elbert, El Paso, and Washington counties for the severe weather yesterday. Most notably, that included twin tornadoes that touched down south of Akron in Washington County. One person died in yesterday's storm out in rural Arapahoe County, where three cars were swept off the road by floodwaters south of Watkins, the Arapahoe County Sheriff says one of the cars was taken 400 yards off the road and it was unreachable immediately due to the high water. Rescuers used a drone to locate the car and they found somebody inside this morning. The hail just seems to be targeting red rocks at this point. It got another round today, smashed the windshield of our news team's car out there. Though today there were not 6,000 people running for cover or the exits as they were bruised and bloodied by an even bigger hailstorm. Steve Stager's out near Red Rocks for us tonight. And Steve, we know that Red Rocks has canceled shows in the past due to weather. They didn't cancel it last night. They were kind of holding people in flux for a while. And the fair question today is whether people got enough warning that baseball-sized hail was coming. Yeah, Kyle, I mean, this kind of sounds like your classic case of a communication problem. So Red Rocks had an initial weather delay where they told folks, maybe it's a good idea to head out to your car. Then they gave the all clear. And then by the time the next warning came about the storm that was actually coming, it was too late for people to really take shelter. One event meteorologist told me today, this might mean that Red Rocks has to take a look at its severe weather plan. You have to look hard to see it the morning after. Signs of what happened at Red Rocks the night before. When chaos was the headline. Hello? As calls flooded into Jeffco's 911 center, water and chunks of hail flooded the exits. You're hearing people crying and screaming and you're getting pelted. Ashley Scott took cover under an umbrella. Everything was really loud. Uh, the thunder was echoing everywhere. And there was probably 40 to 50 of us huddled outside of the first aid room waiting to get in and they wouldn't let us in at first. 
They finally did. Kaya Olson is pretty sure she broke a finger. There's a lot of people in there with like bleeding heads. Both of them told us about an hour before they were told the show was in a weather delay. Then there was an all clear. Then moments later, another delay followed by an urgent warning. Seek shelter immediately. It's not unusual for us to go into a weather delay and then have the weather clear up and the show goes on. Brian Kitts you know, speaks night, for Red Rocks. Uh, he says the venue has contracted forecasters and Red Rocks communicated what the meteorologists told them when they told them. Nobody realized that the hail was going to be as intense or as big as it was. The storms last night and the severity of those storms were no surprise, right? These were storms that had been forecasted all day long. Kevin Claysell uh, is an event meteorologist for the no University of Oklahoma and way. the chair of the Weather Advisory Committee for a group that advocates for better safety practices at venues. And in this case, I think you really need a professional meteorologist on site to assess risk. Uh, much like you would have law enforcement. He says events like this should be a wake-up call. These are events that people go to to have a good time. We don't want to cancel them. We certainly don't, but we want to be the office of, of we're going to have it, but have it safely. And uh, in this particular case, I think everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. So Red Rocks issued a statement on Twitter today that kind of went over like a lead balloon. They offered sincere best wishes to anyone who is affected by this. They said they would, quote, talk to Mother Nature about the weather events that have been happening here at Red Rocks. And as you can imagine, that did not go over well with the people who are in bandages and all bruised up today. But Brian Kitts told me there were a lot of people who actually enjoyed that response. And he said, quote, in the service business, there are a lot of people who aren't going to like anything that you say, Kyle. A lot of people did not like that. No, I think some people were maybe looking for them to talk to meteorologists as opposed to talking to Mother Nature. But, you know, I, I think Red Rocks is pretty sure that their brand is set no matter what, no matter how many people get bloodied by hail out there. So I, I don't know how concerned they are about the reaction to the response. Appreciate you tracking it down those today. Thanks, Steve. They're just not able to get to the place where they feel like their voice matches who they are. Part of pride is finding your voice. And for some Coloradans, it is literally just that. On the days the big forecast doesn't pan out, Danielle Grant comes on and explains why. You're too modest to say it, so I'm going to say it. Two days in a row, you guys nailed this. You told us the where, you told yeah. us the when, and you gave, gave us a good idea about the severity. And good thing, because we had life-threatening weather two days in a row. Absolutely, and it's incredibly rare, too. The late-night thunderstorms we saw last night, we knew today was going to be more traditional timing between 2 and 6, and Mother Nature definitely delivered in a big way. The good news is, as we go throughout the rest of the evening, we're going to be watching these showers and storms pushing off to the eastern plains and losing the momentum, the intensity out there. By tomorrow morning, We'll wake up to partly cloudy skies here in the city. One o'clock, a little bit more sunshine, a lot of heat coming our way. And then by six, seven o'clock, I can't rule out seeing maybe one or two isolated showers going across the far northeastern plains. So if you're traveling along I-76 tomorrow, here's yet again another heads up that we could have some large hail and damaging winds. You're parking yourself here in Denver. I think we should be A-OK, -okay. just a marginal threat in green in between Denver and about Fort Morgan. Tomorrow, temperature soaring into the 80s, a good Good dose of some sunshine. Hopefully we'll be able to dry things out just a bit. 80s out east, 90s in Lamar and Springfield. And the weekend should be fantastic. A lot quieter, a lot calmer around here. So far it looks like 90 degrees on deck next Tuesday, but no storms in sight. Yeah. Watching the video of people at Red Rocks last night, pelted with hail till they were bruised and bleeding, it brought out an odd but I guess unsurprising reaction from a bunch of people today. The whole, well, they should have taken personal responsibility. This is Colorado. You get what you get. It's this kind of like faux cowboy mentality that's actually at odds with what often happened in the history of the real West, which was people working together to deal with the worst of what nature can throw at you. So brushing off people getting hurt in bad weather is actually more keyboard warrior than cowboy. Now, that said... I don't hear any sig serious suggestion that Red Rocks, which of course is owned by the city of Denver, is going to be able to mitigate every outdoor hazard. It simply will not happen. We're not going to put a dome over Red Rocks. But it seems equally foolish to think that we could not improve on the severe weather planning and response. Because 
almost 100 people who needed medical treatment there last night. Meteorologists are telling us today that there are smarter ways to handle quickly developing severe weather like last night at Red Rocks. So are Red Rocks and the city open to hearing those suggestions? Their dismissive social media response suggests they're not. That seems like a missed opportunity because as bad as last night's storm was, this is Colorado. Next time it could be worse. We'll be right back. Speech pathology tends to make us think of young kids working on pronunciation, diction, stuff like that. MSU Denver Speech Language Clinic is also working to help adults in the LGBTQ plus community who want to work on their voice. Many of them are transitioning. One student told our Angeline McCall that free program has helped them feel more comfortable with their own voice. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and do some of our stretches. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and lean forward. Being themselves can never feel complete. And lean back. When they feel one thing has been holding them back. All right, let's do our lip trails. Elliot Enix has been working with graduate student Morgan Sanchez to change it. You're much better than me. <laughs> okay, we'll do Here at MSU Speech Language Clinic, they've been working on Elliot's voice. My main frustration with my voice coming in was definitely just feeling like it kind of like outed me or like was just another thing for people to use to misgender me. Elliot started doing once a week sessions in September. <sighs> okay. It's almost like we've been doing this together for so long. I know. We're breathing in sync. The changes started small <laughs> at first. Cool, so let's go ahead and just do um, just some mmms into our vowels. How do you think your voice has changed? Oh, it's changed a lot. Being able to change my voice depending on the role and being able to go like have a really dark sound to having like, oh, hi, how are you doing today? Whatever. <laughs> um, and being able to put that into characters, but also into my daily life. Yeah, and it just became very natural, which was really cool because it's hard to learn a new thing. No. The clinic began doing gender affirming voice therapy about a year ago. Elliot was one of the first to go through the program. What we often see who, with folks who try to do this on their own is they damage their vocal cords and end up losing their voice, um, or they're just not able to get to the place where they feel like their voice matches who they are. Director Alana Olaf says all of their services are free, but there is a wait list. I think it's, it's just empowerment and being able to see them achieve what they want and, and to be able to go out and live in the community in a way that, that feels authentic and true to them. For Elliot, it took so, eight months. I, yeah, once Elliot was doing what, I mean, reaching their goals, I just was, I was really excited and I felt like I finally fit the little puzzle piece in. That was the goal from the beginning and I definitely feel like I've achieved it. This marks their last session. What is your favorite restaurant? Oh, um, okay. <laughs> I really like this little Italian place. Filled with the type of conversations Elliot will have outside of this room. They just make everything really fresh and it's all just delicious. Nice, let me pause you here. How do you think, how did that sound and feel to you? That felt really natural and open yeah. and dark. I, I, I liked that one. Conversations in a voice Elliot hopes won't hold them back anymore. I think. It's been really awesome to have the tools and also just know how to, how to have more freedom with my voice. And again, all of the services are free at MSU Speech Language Clinic, something that Elliot mentioned is such a monumental thing for the LGBTQ plus community, which has historically been marginalized, particularly with things like medical care and gender affirming care, as well as finding access to it. And a free service, and you think about the value of it, the value of confidence, the, the value of being able to feel like you can have a comfortable conversation with somebody, that's limitless. Yeah, and when you think about your voice, it's something that's so much a part of us, yeah. right? And it's hard to change the way we talk. It's hard to change, you know, our little habits. And so having something that's free over the course of, say, eight months, that's something that, you know, is just a huge deal. That's really special. That's a great story. Thank you, Angeline. Your feedback on stormy weather, and how we cover it. 
plus a note from a former competitor whose opinion I really respect. Dennis. Kathy writes, grateful for the clear, specific, contextualized info we got all day. James says, Chris Bianchi got it wrong about the downed trees. That's beaver damage, plain and simple. We thought that too. An enormous, enormous beaver. Richard says, how many straight hours are you going to tell us that we got rain, hail, and dangerous winds? If next follows this trend, I won't be watching long. Well, Richard, this is an unprecedented day for the metro area in terms of a six-mile tornado path in the metro area, dating back at least 20 or 30 years. So I hope you'd give us a day to talk about it. And I hope there was also value in the context that we gave about Red Rock safety policy and some commentary I know you didn't hear elsewhere. Matt Makins, who used to work across the street at Fox 31, chimed in to say that a source of panic out at Red Rocks is how poor serv cell service can be out there. Think about people who want to keep up with the weather and can't. He thinks that could be part of the fix. That's smart. Like that. See you next time.